decorating is truly an art form. It's a fun, creative hobby. And yet, you really don't have to be an artist to be a good cake decorator. It takes very little equipment. You notice on this particular cake, actually anything that, uh, any type of a picture you would look at using the proper tubes and uh, with your icing at the right consistency, and just following simple step-by-step -step instructions, you can become a fairly good cake decorator in a very short period of time. Another interesting thing about cake decorating is that, you know, once you start to decorate, you will really decorate most of your life. Uh, I have been decorating uh, most of my life. My name is Norman Wilton, and uh, I'm kind of known as the daddy of the cupcake makers. Uh, I think the first thing we'll show you today is the sugar mold method. And sugar molding is where you're just taking uh, plain sugar, granulated sugar, and water. You mix the sugar and water together, and you pack it into a mold, just like you would see the kids doing it out on the beach with sand. And once you pack the soft sugar into mold, you drop it out, and the air will harden this sugar in approximately seven or eight hours' time. Then you pick this hard piece up, and you place it down on a cake top. Now, this will give you your basis of your decorating, and from there, we'll put a few little dots around and some little borders and flowers, and we've decorated a cake. Now that we've talked about this uh, sugar molding, let's view the film and see how easy it is. This beautiful cake that you're looking at was decorated by an artist, a cake decorating artist. But we're going to show you how to decorate cakes, and you don't have to be quite as artistic as the person who did this lovely creation. First of all, we're going to make the sugar mold method. And for the sugar mold method, we take two cups of sugar and four teaspoons full of water. And you just mix the sugar and water together like you would uh, playing with sand. In other words, you just keep rubbing it and working it in, and it becomes very soft, like uh, a sand, like your children would be playing with sand on a beach. Now, you pack it into a mold. In my case, I'm using a, a basket mold. By, after I pack it in, I drop it out, lift the sh mold off, and we have a perfect little basket. In approximately, oh, six or seven hours, this basket is going to be hard. If I want the basket to harden up very quickly, I would put it in an oven about 200 degrees for about five or 10 minutes, and the basket now is hard, and we can work with it. So by working with it, I'm going to place the basket on a cake top. The basket is placed on a cake top. I want to put a handle around it, so I'll take a decorating tube, about a number 16 tube, and just with a little series of back and forth motions, you see, I'm making my handle. Just squeeze, 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 a little series of loops. Now we're going to trim the top of the basket, or the bottom of the basket, rather, in another series of little loops, and then trim the top of the basket. Now next, we're going to put, make a spray of flowers. What I have done, before we make the spray of flowers, we're going to put our stems on the basket. The stems are made with a number oh, 4 tube and a little bit of green icing. You notice the stems, how I'm just kind of drawing them out from side to side? Sometimes, if, you, if you're not too artistic, you can take a, a regular card, a birthday card, and copy the ideas of the artist as, as they have arranged the different flowers. You see, now I'm filling it up with a little bit of icing. The reason I'm doing this is because now we're going to place our flowers in position. Now, the flowers that I'm placing in position, these flowers are made in royal icing, made up ahead of time, and they get very hard. This way, the good flowers that we kind of like and they look good, we'll keep. The bad ones we can um, uh, throw out. But you see, uh, by making these flowers in the royal icing, it's so much easier to arrange them properly and uh, get the type of look that I, I want to create here. And as I'm placing the flowers on, if you would notice, I'm kind of bringing them from side to side. I don't want all my flowers to be real stiff, you see. Just one side to the other, and uh, a little bright color for some accent here. Okay, now we're going to put the leaves on next. With the leaves, I'm going to use a number 67 leaf tube. I've thinned this icing down slightly with the, for the leaf tube, because if it wasn't thin, you see, my uh, leaves wouldn't come off to a point that'd be very stubby looking. You know, the fun thing about decorating is I'm only using about, oh, four tubes for this entire design. And for this four tubes, you could probably buy these for, oh, a little under four dollars. 
And uh, it's so interesting that you could decorate and design so many different things using such a few tubes. This is a 104 tube, by the way, that I've made this handle. But you see how uh, interesting that spray looks? Now, of course, we'll just go around it very quickly and do a finishing border. And this particular finishing border, I'm just giving it a slight zigzag. See, just a little series of loops. Jiggle, 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 stop. And as we come on around, but it's kind of hard to believe that, you know, in about four minutes, a tisket, a tasket, we have a green and yellow basket. You see how interesting it looks? And uh, really, it, even though your flowers, say, weren't qu made quite that nicely, or your basket wasn't made quite that nicely, when you put this whole thing together, your family will just love it. Decorating is fun, uh, it's creative, and um, the more you work, uh, the better you become. So get with it and do a little decorating. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Sugar molding is not necessarily limited to uh, cake decorating. We can make little party favors, put a little handle over the top of them, and uh, uh, we could also uh, drop out a heart, place it on top of a cake, and then we would put a border around the top of this. You know, border work is kind of the framework of a cake. Let's take a look at some various techniques in border work beautiful cake that you are looking at is really the epitome of border work. You will notice even from the top piece, which is totally made of icings, all the way down to each individual design. This is done in freehand, and this would be the type of borders that a very fine cake decorator can do. But we're going to show you today how you could do some very simple borders and that really aren't as difficult as they appear to be. You'll notice here's a shell border, and this little side border, and this is a drop border on the top. In a step-by-step -step way, we hope today that you too are going to become fairly proficient in uh, border work. We're going to start off with a number uh, 22 tube, and uh, I'm just going to make a dot, a series of dots, a squeeze and stop, squeeze and stop, squeeze and stop, squeeze and stop would be kind of like a star drop border. The next step would be squeezing and lifting it up. You notice how I'm lifting it up? Now these very bright <coughs> colors that you see in the border work <coughs> were made by stripping the inside of the bag with a paste color, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle back and forth. We strip the inside of the bag with a paste color and then add icing so we get a two color effect. Now the next border we will do is a shell. And this is something that everyone likes to see and is probably the most familiar with. You see how I make the shell? I lift it up and come down. Heavy, easy, squeeze, stop, squeeze, stop, squeeze, stop. Just a series of shells. Another interesting border would be reverse shell. Squeeze to the right, squeeze to the left. You notice how I lift that tube up though as I squeeze and I relax pressure as I come down. So you really got to let go of the pressure as you come down. Let's do, let's change a tube now. And the, the idea of changing this tube, because I want to show you, using the same border, a, sh a reverse shell, look how different it's going to look. So see, the idea is, by changing various tubes and using the same techniques, it really looks quite different, you see? Fun thing about decorating is the fact that you need a little, just a small amount of equipment, oh, maybe four or five tubes that wouldn't cost, and a bag that wouldn't cost you over, oh, $3.98 or so. This is a little side border that would go on the side of the cake, you see? Speaking of side borders, sometimes we want to practice to working a border right on the side of the cake. So I'm going to show you here, I'm going to work on the side of an inverted cookie sheet. You would for practice, but of course I have a cardboard so you can see it a little better. Let's say on a drop border. I'm going to squeeze, let it drop, stop, touch. Squeeze, drop, stop, touch. Squeeze, drop, stop, touch. You see how I don't follow that down, but I let it drop down by itself. I'm using about a number of five to Look how I'll make these little bows, a figure eight. Actually, it's quite, it's really a lot easier than you would imagine. Because so sometimes you think, 
golly, cake decorating must be a very difficult uh, type of a hobby. But it isn't. I'm using a number 104 tube. Zip, just a nice, easy loop. And then if I want to, notice the bow that I put on the top? I can do the bow with the number 104 tube. This would be the type of tube you'd make flowers with or roses with, you see? But a, a now, here's another border for the side of the cake, but it's a fluted edge. See, it's a, it's a draped ribbon with a fluted edge. Jiggle, 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 stop. Jiggle, 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 stop. Here's another simple one, just a, a little drop and two jiggles, a drop and two jiggles, a drop and two jiggles. So the thing about border work is the fact that you can uh, do a cake and by just varying your different designs and your various borders, many different things can be done. It's not so much the tubes you use, but having your icing at the proper consistency, using the proper movements and techniques Many different designs can be made. And as we had talked about before, you saw these borders being broke down very simply. And so you can see that it really isn't too difficult to do just making each design similar to the one before. And you have decorated a cake. OK, now we saw how to make uh, borders. Now, you notice the easy rhythm that I picked up. It was a squeeze and a stop, a squeeze and a stop. You do the same in order to do border work properly and practice it first on an inverted cake pan. Then when you get the, the technique down, then place it on a cake top. Uh, border work, of course, leads into flower making. We're going to uh, um, show you uh, the art of flower making and see if you too can become a flower uh, artist. The beautiful flowers you are looking at are made completely with royal icing, using a meringue powder and a powdered sugar, or sometimes an egg white. If you look at a flower made with so much creativity and so intricate, it would almost seem impossible that a person could make such a flower by squeezing it through a decorating tube. Today, we're going to try to show you through simple step-by-step -step procedures that possibly you too can become a flower artist. The first flower we're going to make is a simple drop flower and we call it a drop flower because as the name implies it's kind of it's dropped from a tube by dropping it's a squeeze and a turn now you're going to turn a cookie sheet upside down in my case i'm using a inverted cardboard and with a squeeze and a turn a squeeze and a turn a squeeze and a turn a beautiful six point petal is applied you see one squeeze and a turn we have six petals now this type of a flower would be made up in royal icing ahead of time and then of course after it dries we would pick it up and place it on a cake. Another type of flower we're going to do, this is a sweet pea. I'm using, with a sweet pea, I'm using a 104 tube. And if you'll notice, I squeeze, lift it up, relax pressure and stop. Up and down, up and down. The heavy end is touching, the small end is standing out. Let's do a rosebud now. With a rosebud, it's a little cup. After I make the cup, I come around and touch. Another cup, S come around, squeeze, and stop. These types of flowers could be made, this could be made directly on a cake. This is made up ahead of time. Now, next I think we'll do a, um, a daisy. A daisy is kind of an interesting flower, and this is where we're going to introduce the rose nail. And this is a nail where we put a dot of icing on it, a piece of wax paper. Place your wax paper. I'm using a cardboard so you can see it a little better. And this is a simple squeeze and a stop, squeeze and a stop. You notice I'm coming into the center. There is no movement with the tube at all, just a series of squeezes and stopping, and the daisy is formed. Now see, in royal icing, after this daisy is completed, we put a little yellow center in it, and then after it dries on the um, wax paper, we would peel it off and place it on a cake. So that's your first introduction to using a rose nail. Now, we'll make a pansy. If you'll notice, as this pansy comes out, the, the petals of the pansy comes out, we have very deep colors coming out from either side of the pansy. And this is done by stripping your bag in these bright colored flowers. But you see, I'm squeezing 
and jiggle, 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 stop. Squeeze, jiggle, 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 stop. Again, the pansy is made in royal icing. After it's dried, we will peel it off the wax paper and then place it on a cake top. Now everyone, all aspiring cake decorators, the thing that they really want to make is a rose. Everyone wants to make a rose, and it seems to be the most difficult flower, and actually, it is a little difficult. But first of all, again, using the flower nail, we have to get the icing stiff enough. If the icing is not stiff enough, your rose will never stand up. So you can see, see I'm building up a cone first. And for this cone, if, my, if the cone fell down, naturally, the entire rose would fall down. But if you'll notice, I'm making little short petals, Squeeze, turn, squeeze, turn, squeeze, turn, squeeze, turn, squeeze, turn. The last row, I'm dropping it down a little bit. Up and down, squeeze and turn, squeeze and turn. See, I'm turning in a counterclockwise direction. Squeeze and turn. There's the rose. So, if you, as you look and view some of these flowers, you'll notice that depending on what we are doing, sometimes using the same tube, I will make a very tiny petal, you see? Very tiny petal. Or I could make a larger petal or a very large jiggling petal. So the fun thing about cake decorating is you really don't have to be an artist, actually. All you have to do is have a few pieces of equipment, maybe $4.95 worth of equipment, and the proper procedures and the proper icing. And you, too, can become a flower artist. You know, flower making, as you think about it, uh, we did all these various flowers with one or two different tubes. So it's not so much the tubes, but it's the proper technique. And uh, figure piping would be the same uh, type of decoration, only here we're using uh, round circular tubes, and we will use uh, tubes like number three to, say, number 10, depending on what we're going to do. The bigger the figure, the fatter the tube. So uh, uh, let's try a little figure piping see how it's done. We're looking at an interesting children's cake, and the thing that makes this so unique are the little clowns that are piped around the side. Figure piping really isn't as difficult as it appears to be. It's kind of like three-dimensional drawing. You take a, uh, a children's coloring book with very simple figures and lines, and we're going to do the same thing in icing today. Let's start off making a simple little clown. I'm using a, like a number 10 tube, and I put a little ball which makes the clown's head and another little ball for his his the bottom portion of his face and then his body and of course one leg coming out to one side and a, another coming out to the other and a couple of little lines for his arms and not trying to be too perfect with it you know that's the thing that makes figure piping difficult you always want to do everything just exact and after all, when you're kind of sketching like a, a little children's cake, we don't do things so exact. I'm using a number three tube to uh, do the trim. If you'll notice, there's bright colors coming out of here. Before I put my icing in, I dipped a brush into uh, paste colors and then put the stripe of icing in the inside of my bag before I added my color. I mean, before I added my icing. And in that way, you see, I got this very bright paste color and bright look with my icing. Okay, so much for the clown. I think next, a kind of interesting thing to do would be to do a witch. And for the witch, I'm going to use a, the same tube. It's a number 10 tube. Let's say we would do this witch on a chocolate cake, but of course, you're going to be working on an inverted cookie sheet uh, for practice. But on the witch, we would first make a hook for the nose, you know, and then we kind of come around for her eyes. And then I'm building the head up and then the hat. And witches are all kind of pretty ugly looking people, so you can't go wrong how bad this witch looks. That was the upper portion of her body. For some reason, most witches are all female. I don't know why. But uh, here is her right arm and the broom that comes up, you see, she's riding the broom. And uh, so far, we haven't put any clothes on this witch. It looks like she's streaking. But we'll put uh, a few clothes on her here. And there's her hair flying in the back. This is her left arm holding onto the broom. And maybe she's just coming in for a landing. 
and she's just clearing the fence, if you can see what I mean here. See? There she is, just coming in there for stalling out for her landing. But if you notice, you see, all the lines are kind of simple and easy, and I haven't tried to be too precise and get everything just exact. I think next we'll do a bird. Kind of interesting is I'm going to figure pipe this bird. I have put a strip, if you could see, I put a very bright strip of orange on one side, and then I put a, dry st a strip of green on the other, using a brush, and I've added yellow icing. Now, watch what happens. This is the kind of the fun thing about decorating. If you notice, see, I'm, I'm making, first of all, the wing. Now, all the things I've been doing here, I've only used about four different tubes. See that wing? And now the tail, but with four different tubes, you're talking about, you're really in the decorating business, in a fun kind of a hobby decorating business, for oh, maybe spending $3.95 or so. And this is something that you can do continually. Every celebration, you can do a cake. I'll tell you one thing about decorating. Once a person learns to decorate, they never stop. It's not like some hobbies. You just use it all the time because you're continually celebrating occasions. You notice I'm putting the top portion here. If it's a good-looking bird, you see, in the, in the bird family, if it's a very good-looking bird, we call it a male. And if it's kind of ugly, why, well, yeah, it's a female. Of course, that isn't true in real life. But if you notice, you see how cute that is? And, you know, all kinds of things you can do. If we did this bird, and it turns out pretty good, oh, we could make a little nest, you know, and if I was going to make a little nest, I'd just kind of jiggle around like that and put a bunch of little stuff in there. And I could have a couple of little birds coming out of there if I wanted to. But you see, all kinds of little things in decorating. It's really quite simple and fun. So think about getting the children's coloring book first. Think about what you're going to do and keep your decorating simple. The important thing about figure piping is try not to be too exact with whatever you're doing. Notice the little mice we have here. It's just a series of blobs and dots. Another interesting creative art form is um, candy clay, or sometimes called gum paste. This is where we take an edible dough, and using wooden tools, we form and shape various paper-like flowers that almost look real. Connie, show us how it's done. We're looking at a decorated cake today, but it's interesting enough, it's very different. On this particular cake, we have uh, gum paste or candy clay flowers. And we're going to uh, uh, introduce you to a Wilton decorating specialist. Her name is Connie Ryherd. She is going to demonstrate today and show us some various types of candy clay work and um, gum paste work. Also, I might add that Connie uh, is a co-author of a book on gum paste and candy clay. So Connie, tell us a little bit about it and what are we going to do here? Well, gum paste is also called candy clay, mm -hmm. and that might be a better term to use because oh, yes. that shows that you can eat it. It uh -huh. is edible. And it's made from, I forgot. It's made, it's a type of icing. It's made from powdered sugar, mm -hmm. lemon juice, corn syrup, water, and then a special ingredient called gum tragicam. Oh, yes. But you wouldn't be afraid of that. This also is edible. Mm -hmm. One of the nice things about gum paste is it can be used on flowers, or it can be, I mean, flowers for cakes, mm -hmm. or it can be made for flowers, for vases, oh, yes, I vital see. bouquets, and yeah. this sort of you thing. You do arrangements like this too, yes. don't you? Yes, and this is one thing I'd like to show you now. Mm -hmm. Also, these are the carnations, mm -hmm. and I'd like to show you how to make them. Okay, that'd be great. Okay, first of all, in this art, we have many cutters we've developed. Mm -hmm. Right now, I use about 20 mm -hmm. all the time, and and this you're, you're rubbing mm -hmm. in here what kind? That's corn, uh, corn starch. I see. I use that so that this clay or paste does not mm -hmm. stick. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to stick to the, my cutters mm -hmm. or the sticks or the board or anything. I see. The powdered sugar uh, keeps it from sticking. Oh, no, the, the corn, corn starch, starch keeps right. it, and uh -huh. the powdered sugar makes it stiffer. Right. If you want. I see. Yes. Okay. Now this is the cutter. It's about the size of a half dollar. Oh, it's yes. just a disc, mm -hmm. and I'm going to cover this that I'm not using. Mm -hmm because it does tend to dry out rather quickly. I see, and depending on the humidity, the drier right. it is, the more it dries. I right. See. Now, I'm using just a stick here. Oh, yes. It isn't just a stick. Uh -huh. I have a, a series of sticks I use, different I sizes for different flowers. Spinning it down. Mm -hmm. yeah, great. I'm starting in toward the middle, mm -hmm. and as I come off to the edge, I'm using the point of the stick. Oh, yes. 
and this will tear it so it gives it the appearance of the carnation. What a technique. Now you can see it's beginning mm -hmm. to stick a little, so I need more cornstarch. You, you also, you give lessons and teach them? Yes, lesson. I do. I sure do. And the very interesting thing about this, and it's almost unbelievable, you can teach this. You can learn it in a week. Mm -hmm. And that I know because I have had students that mm -hmm. after a week I couldn't tell my flowers from their flowers. That's great. Okay, you've got to go all the way around. This mm -hmm. takes a long time. It looks a little monotonous, but it isn't quite as much as you'd think. Let me see. It's a good feeling when you see this happen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, we're about half finished with good. it. Good, we have about uh, two minutes to go, so we're gonna whip that little carnation out there. Isn't it pretty, though? It is, it's beautiful. You might show uh, some of the Let's orchids or well some of the other arrangements. We can just kind of look at a corn. Uh, this is a carnation that's finished, and I notice all these little bright red things. Did you put those on by uh, a brush? Yes, I made them white originally, mm -hmm. and then I added mm -hmm. paste color, which is also edible, to the edges with a brush. That's interesting. Again, as we're uh, talking here, uh, I'm looking at these flowers as you're making that. Mm -hmm. Each one of these are made with a different, different type of cutter and a little different technique. Yes. Probably what you're doing, though, is one of the toughest flowers, is it not? This is about the next to the last flower we get to I see. in the class. The last one, of course, is the orchid. I see. Because it does take a little longer to mm -hmm. learn. Now, when this is finished, I'll oh, go all yeah. the way around. Okay. I'll take water on a mm -hmm. brush and wet just mm. the center. This makes it sticky. I see. So now I'll fold it over ah. to the middle. And the water keeps it together. Right. Isn't that and cute? And press it up uh -huh. to the ruffle. Oh. Only to the ruffle what because I want the beautiful. ruffles flared. Uh -huh. More water, water for what here. now? To make it so I can make it stick again because I now see. I want to add a piece of oh, floral yes. wire to the center. Oh. And I so turn this it up. is how you got each mm -hmm. individual on a wire. Yes. Turn it up in thirds and now mm -hmm. pinch it together again to the ruffle I and this see. completes the flower. Beautiful. It has to Great. dry now, but mm -hmm. this is it complete. All right. Connie, um, as I'm looking at that, now that's great. How about this? Is, it is that this a little is easier petite. to make? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. I hold it here in this part of my hand, and oh, I would ruffle yes. the same Only, way, mm -hmm. like this. A little bigger ruffle. So yes, uh-huh. I see. Okay. Well, that's so uh, interesting. Just what would you sum up, like, in, in, in the gum paste work? Uh, is it... Uh, is it about the same as decorating, a little more difficult, or what? No, I'd say it's, um, it's a lot like cake decorating, but mm -hmm. it has a lot of challenge mm -hmm. because it's something you can do as a craft, it's I a see. hobby, it isn't just decorating. Uh -huh. You don't have to do it in your kitchen, Very you can do good. it on your living room table mm -hmm. if you want. Thank you so much, Thank that was you. really interesting. Uh, with gum paste, you know, you can roll it out like a pie dough, place a pattern on it, cut around the pattern, and when that hardens, you stand it up and you can take these various sections and glue them together in royal icing so you can s construct houses with it. You can put gum paste into little heart molds and make individual patterns with that. Uh, I hope that uh, throughout this film we've kind of aroused your curiosity and your interest and, and, and would make you want to possibly join one of the thousands of classes that are going on throughout the country right now. And, uh, of course, the second best thing would be to, uh, to get a Wilton book on cake decorating and follow those instructions. But whatever you do, let's get into cake decorating. It's a fun thing. Not only is it a creative way for you and a fun thing for you, but the children, the whole family will enjoy it. It's a great way of self-expression, and let's get with it and be one of the creative uh, uh, happy decorators in this country.